All right, guys, so I'm going to walk you through the BIOS and uh, on the Tai Chi. It's pretty much the same walkthrough on almost all the boards. Just some of the settings are in a different spot. My board looks like hell, sorry, but this is a bench rig, so here goes. All right, uh, first point out that this is the main page, and this is actually kind of uh, useful. You can tell if your memory dropped. You can tell if your CPU dropped. If some of you experience the 15.5x bug. Sometimes your CPU will just downclock. You can always check here on the main tab, and this one will actually be a real speed. Um, other than that, BIOS version, I'm on 236. I bench on Allen 2. This BIOS works. Confirmed to work. So, I like it. I don't want to change it right now. So, I haven't gone up to the new stuff. <sighs> so, I mean, it's pretty simple. You don't need this. This this is only if you're using B-Clock. So, don't bother with that. This is straightforward. Your multiplier. Let me go to manual. Change it up. Don't need to use this voltage. Don't use it. And this is self-explanatory. SMT. Most of you want to keep it on with from an 8 to a 4 core chip. Maybe with Threadripper we'll want that down. But we'll see. So load XMP. I usually load XMP. And the reason I load XMP is to get this DRAM timing table. And the reason I use this DRAM timing table is because I've just had tons of problems with this one sometimes the after a look at it here's one of them this one's already buggy so and things just don't apply the way I want them to so I set them in the other page anyway stable mode overclock mode you don't need this you you really don't need this on air even on water you don't need this it's it's beyond what you would be using in the real world. Um, it's literally for Allen too, so don't even bother. Uh, Core voltage, self-expanded oil. I use fixed. I don't use offsets, but I don't use P-states either. This, LLC. This is LLC. When you people say LLC, this is it. Load line calibration. This basically offsets your droop. Usually, a setting of middle will be safe. Same with this. This is your SOC. Middle will be safe. So, SOC voltage. This is basically like your Northbridge voltage on... Actually, it's not basically like it. It's not like it at all. But it's, it's similar to the Northbridge voltage on DNEB. Basically, you use it to stabilize your memory controller... Usually the voltage range will be 1.05 to 1.15 usable. You can go up to 1.20. I don't think it's beneficial, but it depends on the chip. Anyway, you can go pretty high. I mean, even in, you know, stable mode, 1.6, which is crazy. So you don't need it. I know my chip. So I'm going to set it to 1.0. 3.0 because this board overvolts. I usually run all my chips at 1.40, but that is me. That's just my preference. I run to the max. I should point out that sometimes when you change voltages, like with a fixed mode, like auto, this thing will change back. And then I'm trying to get them to fix this. And then you go to fixed and it goes back to level one. So you want to make sure you put it back. Um, so DRAM and BTT. Usually this number is equal to half of this number. So you can play with it up or down. It does change um, certain chips. This is your VDDP. Um, The range I would say for this is 0.8 to 1.2. It depends on the chip. It really depends on the chip. It depends on your memory config. Um, that's the best I can tell you. You gotta play with your own voltages with your own silicon. It, it, it changes between silicon. 
this I actually run at 1.75 on this board and this is your south bridge it says prom promontory but it's your south bridge voltage and this I usually undervolt also because it does overvolt on this board so uh, let's see um, before we go into DRAM timings we'll go into advanced so PBS, this is basically if you're using B clock, you can go to gem 1, or your LN2 over clock, you can go to gem 1. I would leave it at auto if you're not using B clock. CBS, so the only place that you really need, I mean, you can go in here and shut off core performance boost, but if you're overclocking, you really don't even need to do it. You kind of like, when you change the multiplier up to like 4 gig, 3.8, 3.9, it bypasses it anyway, kills the feature in the chip. So you don't have to kill it. This is where you really want to be though for certain memory types. I am running single rank, so single rank I would do this and I would do this. If this was dual rank, I would do this and I would do this. This is the way you want to run it. One setting will actually cancel out the other one. So you need to set both of them manually. So because I have single rank right now, I am setting bank group swap alt to enabled, bank group swap to disabled. And then we'll go into the DRAM timing configuration. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set your gear mode off. This way you have control over 1T, 2T. If you don't, it's defaulted by the CPU, I think. I don't know the details, but it, you want 1T if you can. It does make a difference. It's not a huge difference, but it makes a difference. And I usually go for annual. I already know my timings, so this is like second nature for me. I know what to set. I know how to set it. But I would highly suggest... Um, testing all the settings yourself because it matters you can use a profile but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work 100% perfect for you this you leave at zero all the time so basically leave it auto these you want to run it three or two I prefer three when I'm chasing my box. These I set manually. These two don't really make a difference. This one makes a difference. You're gonna have to play with it. I would go, I don't know, on one of the BIOSes it was acting funky when I went up, but tightening usually gives you more performance but gives you less stability and loosening gives you more stability but less performance this one usually you want to run um, minus one of cast latency however odds don't work that great now an optimum level would be if I was like running like C15 then 14 would be great so I'm just setting timings that I know that I use for a particular board. But I already know my hardware. It's I behoove you to test your own hardware and find your own settings and find what works for you. Maybe use a template as a baseline of other people's settings, but don't actually use other people's settings because you do not have the same exact silicon as them. I have quite a few sets of memory here, Flare X, 3600, 3600, so um, this set is superb, this set is worse than my 3200 set, so I mean, silicon varies, it is what it is, it's part of the game. So basically, those would be all your settings. Um, 
So I'm going to just set an overclock in here and see what we can get out of this thing. I'm actually going to go like this. Ah, screw it. I'll just go. I just put the water on, so I want to test it. This chip is like a 3.9 gig chip if you can keep it cool. So, we'll try that out and see how it works out for us. Those are actually very loose settings for the memory for my particular set. So, and I highly suggest like doing mem tests and stuff, but I already know my hardware, so I know what it's capable of, I know what it can do. Everything is cool and kosher. I should be able to run Cinebench, no problem. And I should be able to run it 100 megahertz higher than this. And that means I'm in my ballpark of where I need to be. Sorry, I'm kind of tired right now. And 1705, which it says actually not that great of a score right now. Because my memory's not tiled in 100% yet. And I might be throttling. Let's take a look. So we'll keep an eye on the TCL while we do this. Seventy six. So yeah, I'm probably throttling a little bit. I need to turn my fans up. It's up to eighty two already. I turned everything down so we could actually hear. So seventeen thirty one. As soon as you hit eighty five on this particular BIOS, you throttle, and your scores go down. So, I'm definitely going to need to have my fans up if I run Prime on this chip at 3.9. So anyway, it's it's obviously semi-stable right now. Um, let's run a quick, uh, hey, let's see what kind of results we get. This BIOS is actually, uh, I think, a little bit low on copy. If I remember correctly, uh, newer BIOS was actually better performance in copy, but I had extremely difficult issues under cold. So that's the only reason I'm on this BIOS right now is because of cold. Actually, it's this one's spot on right now. It's about usually about 3,000 less than right. Well, anyway, it's uh, the performance is on par just with quick throwing together the settings and uh, 
the multi-thread is a little bit lower than I would expect. This should be in the 1750s at 3.9. Anyway, that sums up navigating through the BIOS and what settings you really need to pay attention to. And I'm probably not going to run a prime right now until I crank the fans up. So, anyway, I hope the video was uh, helpful to the Taiji guys. I can do this on the other boards too, but I mean, it's pretty much all the same. It's just the settings are in different locations and different BIOSes. Um, anyway, tune in next video. See ya.